Howdy readers and howdy film buffs. I'm Jason, this is Chapter and Verse, and uh, this is my video on Terrence Malick's The Tree of Life. Uh, now this video is part of my mortality project, uh, which is called You Carry a Coffin Today, uh, and this is a project that I'm doing uh, throughout 2019, where um, each month, or most months anyway, um, I'm reading a book, uh, novels, and nonfiction, um, and, uh, and looking at films that deal with the subject of death in a thoughtful, complicated way. You guys are all, of course, uh, welcome to join me in this, read along with me, watch the films with me, comment in, in, in the comments fields on, on my videos, or even make videos of your own. Um, and uh, in this video, I was hoping to have up two weeks ago, uh, and then I was hoping to have up my video on body of work today, but um, I've, I've just been just been busy um, working some weekends, uh, yard work stuff, health stuff. Um, yeah, I'm in physical therapy uh, for my shoulders, which is less than fun and it's painful. Summer tends to bring about a lot of projects and a lot of busy work. Um, so anyway, I just haven't had an opportunity to film. Uh, and I've also, I mean, to be fair, I've also just just uh, had a difficult time kind of putting my thoughts together on The Tree of Life. It's a complicated movie. And, um, but I'm here now. And then, uh, and my plan for my video on body of work is to, um, is to put that video up later in the week. Uh, because Lukash from Totally Pretentious is coming out to Wyoming to visit uh, Kelly and I again. He was here in the spring, early spring. Um, and, uh, he read Body of Work for the project this last month, and so we're going to do a video together on that. So um, that's when that video will be going up. So, so I realize that uh, many of you, um, possibly even most of you uh, watching, um, are not um, people of faith, um, are not Christians. But um, in this video, I'm going to be talking about um, death specifically in relation to God and in relation to an afterlife, um, because the film um, subscribes to that. The, the film believes, uh, Terrence Malick as a filmmaker himself is a Christian. Uh, I believe he's an Episcopalian uh, like me. He's got good taste in denominations. So that's what we're gonna do uh, as, far as, as far as this video goes. Um, I hope that doesn't put too, too many people off. So what is The Tree of Life? Um, so The Tree of Life, is a film that came out in, I want to say 2011. Yeah, 2011. Um, this is Terrence Malick's, uh, one of his two absolute masterpieces, in my opinion. Uh, this movie won um, the Palme d'Or, uh, Best Picture at the Cannes Film Festival that year. Um, and it's a movie that he had in the works for a very long time. I think since the late 70s um, is when he started working on drafts of the screenplay. It is inspired, um, so far as we can tell, uh, by his own life, right? It's about a, a family um, of boys uh, with their parents growing up in 1950s uh, Texas. This is where Malik grew up. Uh, Malik had brothers. Um, at the beginning of the film, we learn, and this is after the 1950s, uh, we learn that one of the boys has died. We're not told how or why in the film, um, but we can guess that the boy died by suicide um, because Terrence Malick had a younger brother who died um, by suicide. I wanna say in his late teens or early 20s. This is a pretty polarizing movie. Um, so in addition to being uh, about this family in 1950s Texas, it is also about uh, the afterlife and it is also about the beginning of life itself, uh, the beginning of the universe. And um, about 25 minutes into the movie, uh, we leave the Texas setting and we go through a very long sequence in which we see the birth of the universe, in which we see dinosaurs, and um, all set to this glorious uh, classical music. And uh, when Kelly and I saw this in the theater, I had been waiting years to see it. It had been in post-production for a couple of years maybe three years, uh, actually. And, uh, and the theater was pretty, pretty packed. It was part of a film series. 
uh, and, and when the dinosaur stuff hit, uh, people around us just started getting really antsy and, you know, talking aloud about how should they leave, et cetera, et cetera. And Kelly's thinking the whole time, like, you people better shut your mouths. My husband has been waiting years to see this film. Uh, you are not going to ruin his experience of it uh, because you yourselves are dissatisfied or um, having trouble understanding what the director is doing. And what the director is doing, what Malik is doing, in my opinion, um, by including that kind of centerpiece uh, depicting the beginnings of the universe uh, with... Um, or alongside, I should say, uh, the story of this this rural uh, Texas family in the 1950s is that he is uh, reminding us that this existence, okay, um, is worthy of exalting. Uh, it is part of something that is grandiose and divine and beautiful. And it's easy for us to forget that. And so by including all of that stuff about the birth of the universe and all of that footage is just amazing. I'm not even sure how he did a lot of it actually, but uh, by including that, uh, it's providing a kind of um, epic context for these small quotidian uh, moments and, and lives. And uh, in that way, uh, so I've been talking with Kelly recently uh, quite a lot about uh, Walt Whitman. She's been reading through the 1855 edition of um, Leaves of Grass. And, um, and Whitman's poetry, uh, particularly Song of Myself, um, feels very much like a precursor to what Malick is doing uh, in, this, in this film. Uh, Whitman was reminding us that uh, that all of these ordinary lives, these workers, um, you know, the, these these just ordinary everyday people in mid nineteenth century America, that their lives um, were worth singling out and were worth um, exalting. Uh, their lives were glorious, however um, quiet and unassuming and ordinary they seemed. And that's very much what Terrence Malick is doing uh, as well with, with the Tree of Life. So during the creation sequence, okay, uh, at the beginning of the creation sequence, after we've already learned uh, that the boy has died, that the younger brother has died, uh, we hear um, the main character in uh, narration, I think it's the main character, I can't remember, uh, in narration say, Lord, uh, where were you? Okay, which is accusatory. Uh, it is implying that God was somehow absent from this boy's side during his suicide, that, uh, that God was somehow disinterested. And, um, and later in the film, uh, there's a boy um, who's not central to the, to the movie at all, but a boy who dies at a swimming pool, who drowns. And, uh, and again, we hear uh, in, in narration and voiceover, uh, where were you? You let a boy die. Again, accusatory, you let a boy die. Uh, where were you? Why were you absent? And what that presumes uh, is that God is only present um, in moments of joy or in moments of ease, right? That his, um, that his presence is correlative with, uh, with life, with good things happening. And, um, and that's not necessarily the case. Uh, so these moments in the film really reminded me a lot of uh, Shusaku uh, Endo's uh, novel, Silence. Um, Martin Scorsese made a really tremendous film of this as well. And what this novel is about, um, it is set in uh, 17th century Japan, uh, and it is about the persecution of uh, Western uh, Jesuit priests who are in Japan uh, aiding the um, kind of hidden uh, Christian communities there among villages. And, uh, and so these, these villagers are persecuted, um, are, are tortured, are executed, they're crucified. Um, the Jesuit priests are imprisoned, tortured, etc., etc. And, uh, and through it all, right, the silence of the title, um, the Jesuit priests are wondering about God's silence, right? Um, constantly, the Jesuits are asking uh, God, uh, why weren't you with me? Why weren't you with us? And at the very end of the book, 
um, the main character uh, is in conversation uh, with with the Lord, and um, and he tells God, he says, "I resented your silence," and God says, "I was not silent. I suffered beside you." And uh, and what is so powerful about that is that instead of saying um, like the main character does in voiceover in the Tree of Life. Lord, where were you? Um, where were you? You let a boy die. Um, instead of asking these questions, why weren't you with us? We should be asking, were you with us? And, and the answer to that is yes. Um, that God is there, even in those uh, most horrifying moments, even in those moments uh, when we can't feel his presence. Even in those moments when we're despairing and we feel completely alone and um, completely bereft. And uh, he's there. And, um, and that's one of the really lovely things, I think, about the ending of Silence. It was so powerful. Um, but also in The Tree of Life is, is figuring out the truth of that. Um, is listening for God's response to um, to those uh, accusatory questions that we pose. Where were you? In the end of the film, we see this this long sequence um, meant to uh, be a kind of image of the afterlife, right? On a beach, we see characters uh, with um, people from their past, right? Who are still who are still young, walking this beach. And these kind of angelic uh, beings as well. And the mother, who has been suffering so much uh, from the death of her son, uh, finally uh, gives him up uh, to, to God. There's this beautiful moment near the end where she's being buffeted about uh, by these angelic hands and, and uh, in this light. And she, um, she says in voiceover, uh, I give him to you. And, and what that makes me wonder, what I'm curious about, is what does it mean to give the people that we've lost to God? Um, because I know that when people die, oftentimes uh, the, the, the natural knee-jerk uh, response is to, um, is to resent God, right? To, um, to be angry at God uh, and at play in the fields of the Lord. Uh, I can't remember how it works in the in the in the novel, but in the film at least, Aidan Quinn's character loses his boy to a fever. And um and and John Lithgow's character is just trying to essentially say that uh um you know it was God's will and you know it was God wanted the boy and he can take the boy, et cetera, et cetera. And um and Aidan Quinn uh his his character just just explodes and it's it's one of the great scenes i've ever seen in a movie one of the greatest bits of acting and he says if god took my son uh, he is not welcome uh, he is not welcome to my son and um and what that does is i think it just uh it festers inside of us and uh and it becomes a kind of snarled knot that we carry around within us and um and i wonder to what extent uh it allows us to heal if we can understand, A, that God did not take the son. Uh, God did not take the child or our loved one away. God did not will it. Uh, and if we can understand that uh, instead that God was alongside, um, walking hand in hand with uh, the loved one um, in their final moments, uh, through their despair, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. If we can understand that, and if we can understand um, that it's up to us to to give over uh, that loved one after the loved one has passed away, um, what does it do to our own healing if we can uh, let go of the resentment and if we can um, entrust our loved one's uh, soul to uh, to the Lord? Um, I think it can do a great deal, uh, obviously. I mean, I have people in my family who, uh, to this day, um, have for decades carried around rage um, toward God for um, the deaths of uh, their loved ones. 
and I've seen how it does them no good at all, uh, none at all, um, because their perception of God's relationship to the death of their loved one, it's off, and uh, and they have never um, had any kind of guidance in in uh, in understanding uh, what's actually going on there. Um, you know that that it wasn't that uh, God allowed something to happen, or wanted something to happen, or willed it, or took the person from them. That's not it at all. Um, but they've never understood that, and uh, and they've carried this uh, this rage around inside them for decades. And uh, and I've seen what it has done to them. It's understandable. I get it. Um, I, I completely understand that impulse. But it's important for us to uh, permit ourselves uh, to consider more nuance, I think, in, um, in what happened with the death of a loved one um, and what might be happening with an afterlife. And I think that, I don't know, I think the movie is, um, is just a lovely, honest portrait of, um, of family and of connection between people. Uh, and also how uh, people damage each other, um, forgive each other, fail to forgive each other. And I think it's hopeful on the subject of, of uh, individuals and families healing in the wake of a death of a loved one, in the turbulence of that. Um, I think that there is a great deal of, um, of hope and promise in, in how the movie understands um, how we can move forward and um, and how we can let go. It's a beautiful thing. The movie's just exquisite. It's just absolutely gorgeous. I've seen it three or four times now. Um, I like it more every time I see it. I notice more things in it that are really profound and significant every time I see it. Um, yeah, I would say it's one of my 10 favorite movies of all time. One of the 10 best films I've ever seen. So there's that. And for those of you in the States um, who are curious about The Tree of Life, who've either watched it or who now maybe want to watch it, um, you'll want to know that uh, at barnesandnoble.com right now, it just started one, two days ago, um, their uh, twice annual 50% uh, off sale on Criterion Collection DVDs and Blu-rays is going on. The Tree of Life is in the Criterion Collection, and in that release uh, is the theatrical cut of The Tree of Life, as well as a, a director's cut of it that's an hour longer. Uh, I ordered it just the other night, um, so it hasn't arrived yet, uh, and I haven't ever seen that longer cut, but I can't wait to see that longer cut. So next month uh, in the project, we are going to be watching The Seventh Seal by Ingmar Bergman, and we're going to be reading Death with Interruptions by Jose Saramago. Uh, I won't be doing two videos um, on these. I'm going to do one joint video at the end of the month. Um, mainly because in both that novel and this film, Death is actually a character. Death is a figure. Um, there's a kind of a grim reaper presence in both of those. And I thought it would be fun to make a video addressing uh, both of them together. I will leave it there. And I will uh, talk with you guys again very soon. Please let me know uh, in the comments below uh, what you thought of the Tree of Life. Adios.